In this tutorial we will discuss techniques and instrumentation of Raman spectroscopy. Laser is almost ideal as a source for Raman experiment, it gives a narrow, highly monochromatic, coherent beam, which can be engrossed very finely into a small sample. In addition, lasers can be extremely powerful, ranging from milliwatts to several watts, concentrated into a small energy spread. This figure illustrates a typical Raman spectrometer. The laser beam is passed through a cell, usually a narrow glass or quartz tube filled with a sample. Light scattered sideways from the sample is collected by a lens and passed into a grating monochromator similar to that used in a dispersive infrared instrument. The signal is measured by a sensitive photomultiplier and, after amplification, it is usually processed by a computer which plots the Raman spectrum. The use of plane polarized radiation gives information about the symmetries of molecular vibrations. To make these measurements, the laser beam is plane polarized perpendicularly to the plane of the paper, and a polarizing filter is placed between the sample and the collecting lens. The Raman spectrum is then measured twice, first with the polarizing filter set to pass light polarized perpendicularly to the paper, and then at right angles to this. The ratio of the two signals for each Raman line is a measure of the degree of polarization of that line. For vibrational measurements the Raman technique has several advantages over infrared spectroscopy. Firstly, because both the incident and scattered radiation are at ultraviolet or visible frequency, conventional optics and same cells, that may be glass or quartz can be used, so avoiding the problems inherent in sodium chloride NaCl windows, atmospheric absorption, etc. Secondly, because the beam can be focused extremely finely very small samples can be studied. For example sample with diameters as small as 0.1 nanometer are possible to study in Raman spectroscopy. And this combined with pulse techniques which can give very short time resolutions, enables very small quantities of transient species to be studied. Thirdly, water, which has strong infrared absorptions, is a rather weak Raman scatter and so aqueous solutions can be studied using Raman spectroscopy, because the sample signal is not swamped by that of the solvent. These reasons collectively ensure that Raman spectroscopy is particularly well suited to the study of biological systems. For example it can be used in the study of spectrum of myoglobin. In addition to the liquids and solutions, Raman spectra can be obtained from gas and solid samples. In the case of gases, multiple reflection techniques are sometimes adopted, where the laser beam is reflected several times back and forth through the sample, in order to enhance the signals. One major problem with some Raman samples particularly if they are colored is that the heat generated by the intense, focused laser beam may cause decomposition. Another problem which sometimes arises is that of sample fluorescence. Such radiation can totally swamp the weak Raman signal. The instrumentation for modern Raman spectroscopy consists of three components. They are Laser source Sample illumination system And suitable spectrometer. Let's discuss these components in briefly. Laser source the sources used in modern Raman spectroscopy are nearly always lasers because their high intensity is necessary to produce Raman scattering of sufficient intensity to be measured with a reasonable signal-to-noise ratio. Because the intensity of Raman scattering varies as the fourth power of the frequency, argon and krypton ion sources that emit the blue and green region of the spectrum have an advantage over the other sources. Sample Illumination System the sample of Raman spectroscopy may be solids, liquids, or gases. Let's discuss them in briefly. Solid samples. Raman spectra of solid samples are often acquired by filling a small cavity with the sample after it has been ground to a fine powder. Polymers can usually be examined directly with no sample pretreatment. Liquid samples. The major advantage of the handling in Raman spectroscopy compared with infrared arises because water is a weak Raman scattered but a strong absorber of infrared radiation. Thus, aqueous solutions can be studied by Raman spectroscopy but not by infrared spectroscopy. This advantage is particularly important for biological and inorganic systems and in studies dealing with water pollution problems. 
Gas samples. Gases are normally contained in glass tubes, 1 to 2 cm in diameter and about 1 mm thick. Gases can also be sealed in small capillary tubes. And the next important component of Raman instrumentation is Raman spectrometers. Raman spectrometers were similar in design and used the same type of components as the classical ultraviolet visible dispersing instruments. Most employed double grading systems to minimize the spurious radiation reaching the transducer. And photomultipliers served as transducers. Now, Raman spectrometers being marketed are either Fourier transform instruments equipped with cool germanium transducers or channel instruments based upon charged coupled devices.